states from 0.13 version onwards, Terraform requires explicit source information for any providers that are not HACCP maintained. What is guys, what is HACCP maintained and what is not HACCP maintained, right? If I go to this provider's blog, right? If I go to this, okay. If I go to the providers here, right? Uh, let's go to the providers. And here we have official partner and community. So if I go and check any of this particular and if it's official, you can see maintained and created by Hasiko. This is maintained by Hasiko. Okay. So if I go to other service providers, if I go to, so these are Hasiko, these things are Hasiko. If you see here, view more, we'll have multiple providers which is maintained by Hasiko. That is what it is written here. If the providers is maintained by Hasiko. If you simply give provider block without specifying the Terraform required provider, it will work. That means if I if I just just open this particular file and if I remove this one, if I remove this one, still it will work. Based on the provider we use it it will download this AWS plugin and work because it is the native or maintained by Terraform. That's why we don't ex explicitly require this button. But in the newer version, from starting from 0 0.13 version, it is now recommended to use this Terraform required provider, whatever you want, and then use it. So very clear, guys. So, and so consider that in the production, we may be having old codes, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So, in that case, we have to start adding it if we upgrade our Terraform to on three. Yes, that is very good question. Then, how you do that? Suppose in your very old uh, old codes, uh, which which will be written uh, long back, and definitely they will not have this particular code. They will have starting from providers. Then, how you add this? If you add this portion, it will not impact until unless you provide the accurate version. We'll see how this version can be used in a different way. Suppose you are using in, in your previous code or old code, you are using 2.34 version, 2.34 version. What you have to do, if you want to add this, you can simply add version 2.34. Three. That's why it is also mentioned here. It is for both maintained and non Hasikov maintained. That means if you are already working the Hasikov maintained plugin or provider, you don't have to add it. It will work. It will work. But in the newer versions, you they are giving options you may or may not add. So what happens? It's here explicitly sole in source information for any provider that are not HACCP maintained using a new syntax in the required provider's nested block inside the Terraform configuration. So which are not HACCP maintained, you have to mandatorily provide this particular required providers. If you are already using AWS, then it is not required to add it. If you add it also, it's good. Okay. Now, let's check about the versions and all. How we'll use the different kind of versions, right? Before going to that, let me just um, uh, we, we talk about this. Uh, okay, let's talk about this versioning first. What is this provider versioning and why it is so critical and why it is so useful? Basically, why it is so critical. If you are working on any automations and if you're not sure about the versioning, what, are, what is the previous version and whatever the current version or what you are think going to upgrade it and what will be the impact? If you don't understand, then it will be a big challenge and big problem for you to do the infrastructure setup. Right? So here it happens, the provider versioning, the provider plugins are released 
separately from Terraform itself. They have different set of versions number. So here we can set up the versions explicitly. Like if you see here, the version we have provided here h equal to 4.52, right? And if you want particular to provide a version which is equal or greater than this particular version. So what you have to do, you have to specify this tiled mark greater than, suppose this version is 3.0. Any version within the range, this is the range within the range 3.x version. So if you see this one, Normally, you'll be thinking why we need a range, right? The range is required to support your application. Think about the scenario I always tell you, whatever thing you are doing, you should know what you are doing and what will be the use of that, right? If you're going to use few applications which are built from suppose uh, 2.0 to 2.9, in between you have few applications. In between, you have few servers, sorry, you have few automations have been done and few files have been created. And if you're going to do these automations by using the range tiled greater than 2.0, what will happen? The range with the 2.0, it will be all the infrastructures will be updated within that range. <laughs> Normally, what happens? If you have to specify particular version, why we need this particular version? Normally, what happens in your company if you are doing automations? We work on particular version, so it is always recommended to use the exact version which is being used. Okay, so particular version which is recommended to use, we have to always use. So what happens if you see here the for production use we constrain the acceptable provider version via configuration to ensure that new versions with breaking changes will not be automatically installed. If you do some changes to the version range, it may impact the server configurations. So be careful whenever you are working on the versioning part. Also, you might have noticed, right, when you initialize something, right, when we initialized something, we got some hidden files. See, if I do ls la, we have some hidden files here. What is this hidden file? This is a log file. We'll have uh, more details in the log file, but basically I'll tell you what is this log file, and we'll have a complete session on the log file also. How will uh, this log file and state file also, okay? So what is this log file? If I just open, this is a file, okay? This is a simple file. If I just open this file, let's see. See guys, what it contains, this log file, this is file maintained by automatically by Terraform init. When you init, use initialize the folder, initialize the project, it will create this Terraform log file, okay? So this Terraform log file based on the Provider block, based on the provider block in the file, it will create this log file. And in the provider block, we had given the version 4.52. And it has created a hash, which will help you to lock any version upgradations accidentally. It will not allow you to upgrade the words, uh, versions accidentally. What do you have to do? If suppose there is a requirement to upgrade, then what you have to do? You have to simply delete this particular log file, then change the version, then it will work. Okay, now this is the usage of this log file, guys. Now this is the basic usage I told you. I will again the advanced locking mechanism and see how we can use that one in our upcoming classes. So remember, Whenever you initialize, a log file will be created and it will ensure you that it not automatically or accidentally upgrade the versions in the Terraform. Okay, that is for you. Okay, we have the log file. Let's modify the provider block with a different version. 
okay, with the different version. So what I'll do here, um, let's be edit this file. Suppose I'll use the version five uh, zero. Suppose this version is nothing but the AWS based version, right? This one, uh, the plugin version. Wait, I'll show you again. The plugin version. This AWS plugin version aws asic of aws plugin version terraform aws plugin okay it's not the terraform version it's a provider version okay so if you go to this provider right if you go to this aws provider you can see here the version 4.52 this is the version of this particular plugin which version of plugin you are going to use and if you see one we have multiple versions 4.50, 4.52, and all these versions. If you see all versions, you'll see whatever the versions you are working, everything will be there. Okay. So these are the plugin versions. When when we change the version, normally the syntax may also change, right? So that exactly. better to follow everything. Exactly. So based on the version, the syntax might change because they're upgrading their uh, tools, right? They're upgrading their plugins. Suppose if you want to use uh, 4.27 so you just select this 4.27 based on that you just go for the documentation here go to the documentation and based on that you will get the code see you are viewing the documentation for 4.27 uh -huh. this is how you have to use cleverly the documentations it's very 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 useful okay then so you have to, you'll get the code accordingly yeah and so in the existing old code uh, mm -hmm. if we want to upgrade the version to 4.52 just by changing the provider block, it may not work. The syntax exactly. also we have to confirm. Exactly. When we are updating old code. Okay. Exactly. So suppose what happens? You have uh, four point two seven. Or suppose you have three point zero versions uh, code you have written, and you want to upgrade to the newer version four point five two. Sometimes what happens? Four point three point zero. Whatever the parameters and the resources uh, parameters will be there that might not be there. They might have changed something. Then you have to upgrade it accordingly. So it is the simple ways, right? Whenever we do any upgradations in your company, in your organ, in anything, you make sure that everything is up to date based on the requirement and based on the things, whatever new changes be there and uh, new things are there. If you are downgrading or upgrading, it's up to you. And you have to definitely change the code based on the versions parameters available. Okay. So uh, good guys uh, asking for these questions and uh, everyone should uh, know how we are working with things okay any other questions guys no okay uh, we can proceed uh, hi ranjit sir yeah yeah sure uh, ranjit can we change the version without destroying it uh it will not allow it will not allow okay we'll do that uh, one demo also one project uh, one uh, uh, run also okay okay let me just do the changes let me save it okay let me save it it will forcefully also we can do that also i'll show you how we can once we manage the state file is there right once we cover the state file things then you can also understand how you can do that okay we have to okay. the state file is very important that's why i kept it after this i'll talk about the state file Stateful management is most important in Terraform. Okay, and that will take one complete class on state files. Uh, what I did, I just updated to the EC2, and I did not delete the. I did not delete this log file. Log file is there. Okay, and this log file, if we just open it, it is contains still the version, still the 4.52 version. But in our Terraform file has downgraded to 4.50. Right now, let's execute and see whether it is working or not. So what I can do, Terraform. Let's do the plan. But, okay. See, if I directly do the plan, what it did, it was check the configuration file. We have done 4.50, but the log file is contained. The log file is contained 4.52. It did not allow, it shows error. So what happens? Provider requirements cannot be satisfied by locked dependencies. So it first checked the log file and did not allow. So what we have to do? Let's do the 
Terraform init. Because we downgraded, we need the new plugin now. Okay, so what do you have to do? We have to do Terraform init. Initializing, again, it is failed because of the log file. Because of the log file. What it says, reusing previous version of the Hasikra from the dependency log file. Error fail to copy available provided packages. Everything is given clearly. Now, what I can do here, simply I can go, if I know want to downgrade it, I can simply go and delete this particular log file. Okay. Now the log file is deleted. Then now if you want to downgrade it, simply initialize it. See? It is downloading and installing the new plugin version, the old plugin versions, not new, the 4.50 plugin. So every time you want to do some changes, that is a very good mechanism and locking mechanism being provided by the Terraform. Okay, it's very good one. So you have to be careful and you have to work. And if you suppose that you somebody, if you don't know and uh, if you upgrade or downgrade something, it may cause some problem, right? So that's why it is locking. Now, if I do initialize, it will download that specific plugin and do the required setups. Okay, it's done successfully initialized.